Hello, Dr. Raul Cuero. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about all your books. I know you have many uh, NASA inventions and scientific inventions. Uh, a little bit about you. Um, it's an honor to have you. You are a microbiologist, a research scientist, distinguished professor, and inventor, but you're also an author of many books. Among them, I know the first one, Triumph and Survival, uh, How to Create, uh, Water and Eons, and the Conditions Necessary for Presence of Life, Fear and Courage Today, and Throughout Civilization, Loneliness as a Source of Creativity, and the last one is about the COVID pandemic from a very interesting uh, point of view. Uh, so today we're going to talk about three, uh, three different uh, books that you've written, and we're going to start with the water one, which was published by uh, Cambridge Press, a highly prestigious uh, publisher. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask you why you decided to write a book about water and life. Why is that important in the presence of life? Presence, uh, because through all my scientific career, well, life itself has been an inspiration for me biogenesis, origin of life, since I was a little kid. Right. I, I always try to wonder about the divine trilogy, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking at uh, animals like uh, lizards, and, and I cut the tail of the lizard, and the tail continued moving. And I said, how come the tail moving by itself uh, without the rest of the body, and I tried to attach it to make it to make it <laughs> work together. Right. And so that's uh, make me think. I was uh, we talk about the age of five, six years old. Right. Uh, made me think about how life was, and then when in the divine trilogy, uh, I was wondering how come three powerful entities could exist together, oh, okay. and what is the origin of those entities? Mm -hmm. And that inspired me to be more into theological, philosophical views, and those philosophical views gave me reasoning, and that reasoning made me wonder about life. And so then, along the way, I started studying plants, and I studied one of the plants which parasites other plants. I had never seen that thing. I said that uh, microbes parasite people. Right. But I never saw a plant parasite on a plant. And I said, where the origin? How did it, how did it happen? So then I went into the photosynthesis. How it happened? Where the plant get the energy? And that the energy, I, I, of course, I realized come from the solar system. Okay. Uh, and then I said, what is in the solar system that make this plant to create uh, the fruits, the the food that we enjoy so much. So then uh, later on my, when I was a, already a professional person, a scientist, uh, I started looking at the Martian situation, mm -hmm. uh, the planets, and I put everything together um, and I, I said, why is the Mars doesn't show, doesn't seem to, to hold life right. as compared to Earth? Then due to that, I started investigating by myself through reading, and later as a professional research scientist, we already have at that time about, about 30 years experience, I got a grant from NASA to study a soil called a simulant soil, Martian simulant soil. soil. Yeah, Martian soil. Yeah, yeah simulant, not what the real. Right, obviously. Yeah. Well, was, they call it regolith. And, and, and I said, well, if, if we need to know how come lies, or how can lies exist before us, or how it's going to be in the future, the best, the best thing to do is to articulate different molecules genetically and throw it into the environment of, of, of Mars. It does assemblage, biological assemblage is going to grow, 
that mean that was the type of light that used to be there. Right, right, right. Of course, I never get to do that, but nevertheless, my interest in how, despite presence of water, uh, it has been reported. Mm -hmm. In some cases, there is no light. And I said, well, I, I said, the problem is that we debate about origin of life or finding life in many places, including Mars. But I think the best thing is to look at biological system because life can be defined in many different ways, philosophically, biologically, you know, ethnically, all kind of definition. And, and there are many people who have done great job. And I say, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is to demonstrate what is what makes water important to sustain biological or biomolecules who later leads into life. So for that purpose, I look at the, first of all, the origin of the cosmos. And I found that indeed after the, the great uh, expression of the, of the universe, uh, there was a production of what we call a cosmic dust before the supernova. Uh, and, and, and the cosmic dust, we find one of the main elements happen to be hydrogen in some of its derivatives that we call an isotope, including deuterium. And also we have beryllium and other very high energy elements. And I say, well, how this, at that time, there was no sign of water, no sign of life, of course, because this, this, this cosmic dust which contain these elements that I mentioned, appear around 13 billion years ago. Mm -hmm. And then water appeared four billion ago as a result of the outer layer of the solar system. Okay. And then lights appear later, 2.4 billion. So I said, bingo, uh, when the, these ions or those start transforming themselves, they, went in, they came into the ocean, possibly. But the ocean at that time didn't have any, didn't sustain life. It starts sustaining life only when the ions or the metal ions appear in it. Okay, you know? Yeah. So that is the reason why most of the, most people who study origin of life biogenesis, that's the name, uh, they always study the famous pond of Darwin, the pond of Miller, all those greatest guys. Now, uh, metal ions are iron, magnesium, zinc, sulfur. Yes. Those are the elements. Why, well, well, no, why those, are, those are not the only elements. Those are they were the main element at the beginning. The main element. You say okay. it very well. I, I'm glad that you say that. And why uh, is it important? to sustain life? Why are these elements? Because, because these elements and other, there are two types of metal ions. The one that you mentioned, which includes, as you said, uh, magnesium, copper, iron, uh, even zinc, zinc and, sulfur. and sulfur. And also you have a fluoride and some that we call it in a stereo salt, like a sodium, very important. That's, that's called a transitional metals. Okay. Those are the ones that we have in our body. Okay. But there were another one that called heavy metals, like a cadmium, lead, uh, vanadium, nickels, mercury, that we call it toxic. But the reality is that the one that is in our body, they don't need to be ionized. I see. But the other one need a lot of energy to be ionized. Yes. So in reality, they are not really toxic. They are, they are toxic because they cannot be ionized. I see. But the one in our body called a transitional metal, they are ionized. Remember that we have 118 elements and 95 happen to be metal ions and among them, those are the one. So, so when the metal came into the water, a life start being emerging. Uh -huh. and, and then those ions and metals start doing the, providing the energy. What do we call it? There are two ways to look it up. If you have the metals, there are two stages, oxidize or reduce. Those are extreme 
extreme stages of the metal. When they are in those extreme stages, extremely oxidized or extremely reduced, there is no energy, free energy. That means there is no electron, electron availability. Mm -hmm. Because you have proton and you have the electron. Okay. And one of the problem is, if you have the proton, and when you have most of the positive one, it's positron, it's the positive one, the energy is not released. And, and also, when you have the electron, the electron is able to help us in the metabolism, carabolism, anabolism okay. for our, for the sustainability of life. Okay. That is why when you, when you take some ion for your body, it is recommended that these ions are chelated. That means that they are bounded or bonded to any organic material, such as plant material or proteins. And also the metal were very important because they were the one who allowed the initiation or the synthesis of DNA as well as the RNA and proteins. They kick that synthesis okay. at the beginning. Now, you know, obviously this book is, is, is scientific, but one of, the, one of the things you spend time talking about climate change and how that because we're facing now very obviously some serious climate change conditions, you say, how does climate change alter the conditions for the presence of life? Very important. In a very simple, understandable way, uh, anytime all metals, they, they are active in presence of water. If, if there is no water, we call it, we call it uh, uh, a, the hydrophilic condition, hydrophilic condition or hydrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the metal, they are together in synergy, but they, be, they are resting in the water as a net, as a scaffolding. So when they are scaffolding in the water, then molecule like a proteins, carbohydrate, all of them can be synthesized. I see. They are like scaffolding. But also the metal gives the water the ability to, to pass energy because the water is the best diluent or solvent. Why is that? Because the water is, is a transporter of molecules and molecules have atoms, it transporter, but it never, never bounded to them. That's the beauty of the water. The water transported, but it don't get with it, with, the, with what, it, what it is transporting. But that's due to the, to the, to the metal ion who provide the energy to the water. And the water provide the, 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 the hyd hydric condition to the metal, okay. for the metal to be active and produce electrons and, and, and maintain the flow, the flow of energy. It's, it's like the chick and the egg, right. rather than the chick or the egg. Right, right, right. That's the essence of this book. Okay. That's the essence. Well, uh, but, but sometimes what you find, when you find, for instance, uh, water and there is no life, that means that the ions are in extreme condition, oxidated or reduced, which that is perhaps the situation in Mars. And that's the situation that happened at the beginning of the planet Earth. Well, and when you get those, the climate changes, it, is, it, it becomes too dry. Remember that we, the plant produces food. Right. By wanting to produce the food, it, it requires ions to synthesize the proteins and the, and the carbohydrates. Okay. So that is why the best, the, best more fer, the best fertile soil produces the best plants. Because they take the ions from the delta. For instance, the Paraná River in Argentina gave the, the, the advantage to Argentina in the past because that was very rich in metal ions dissolved in that water. Okay. But when it gets dry, it's very dangerous because there is no going to be availability of ions in a state like electrons that, are, that the plant is able to use it for the synthesis or the 
or the food. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Coyer, for joining us and for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you.